Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how you can import a CSV into SQL Server using Azure Data Studio. I do most of my development using a Mac, and at my day job I use SQL Server a lot. And a lot of people when using SQL Server use SQL Server Management Studio to connect to the database, run queries, and manage the database. However, SQL Server Management Studio doesn't work on Mac. So I tend to use Azure Data Studio for my tool for database administration. Since Azure Data Studio doesn't have all of the fancy built-in tools that SQL Server Management Studio does, there's only a couple ways you can do it using Azure Data Studio. So I'll show you the two ways that I know of doing it. So let's jump in and get started. And the first way that I'll show you is using bulk insert. Bulk insert isn't even a tool that's necessarily part of Azure Data Studio. It's just using the SQL engine itself. Using bulk insert allows you to take a CSV file and import that into an existing table in your SQL Server. And here I have a really small CSV file. This one is just a bunch of random information about vehicles. And the columns in this CSV file are the vehicle ID, the make, the model, year, color, fuel type, mileage, condition, and price. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we have a table that we can import into. Here I'm in Azure Data Studio. I'm connected to my database. I'm actually connected to a local database. And this one is actually Azure SQL Edge and it's running in a Docker container. I have one database in here called TestDB. I don't have any tables in here yet. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll create this table. So I'm just gonna say create table vehicles and all of these columns match the columns that were in my CSV file. So I have vehicle ID, make model year, color, fuel type, mileage, condition, and price with the correct data types. So I will go ahead and create that table. The next thing we'll do is we'll run the bulk insert statement. Over here in this tab, I already have this written out and it's actually pretty simple to do this. So the command is bulk insert and then the table name with the schema. And then from is the path to where your file is. One important thing to keep in mind about this bulk insert with this from command here is that this has to be a location that SQL Server has access to. So in my example here, I'm running this database in Docker. And this actually kind of got me hung up the first time I tried this is, let's just say for example, that I want to import this CSV file and it's on my computer, which is the host of the Docker container. If I give it this path and I try to run this, you can see that it says cannot do a bulk load the file does not exist or you don't have access rights. And since you're running this in SQL, the actual SQL database has to have access to it. And in Docker, you don't have access to the files on the host unless you do a volume, which in this case I'm not. So this has to be in the Docker container. Or if you're running this from SQL Server, that server has to have access to wherever the path file is that you give it. And so I've copied this file into my Docker container. And just real quick, if anyone is doing Docker and wants to know how to do that, you can use the docker cp command. So cp is for copy. And the syntax for that is docker cp, and then you give it the path to the files. And I'm actually in the current directory of where the file is. And so I'm just giving it the local path, vehicles.csv, and then you give it the container name and then colon slash and then the file path. And so this command right here will just copy it into the root of the Docker container. Okay, so back in the Azure Data Studio, the rest of the command is this with, and this is just all of the options that you can pass into this bulk insert statement. And in my example, the really the only two things that I need is the format, which is CSV, and then the first row is the second row, because my first row has all the column names in it. And in this case, I don't really need the column names, I've already declared all those names as my table columns. Now if I go ahead and run this, it'll import all this data into my table. Here it says 25 rows affected. If I do a new command and say select star from vehicles, there's all my data. And this bulk insert command also has a lot of different options like I mentioned before. And I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I will put a link down to this documentation in the description down below. But the nice thing about using this tool is that it doesn't actually have to be a CSV file. It can technically be any flat file. And using the different options, you can tell the bulk insert what the separator is for the different fields. So if it could be a tab or a bar or any other character, so it's a great option, it's pretty flexible. You do have to have a table before you do this. So that's one little caveat. It's a little bit different than the next way we do this. It's also a good option if you have to do this on a schedule. Let's say for example, that you get a new file once a week from a third party customer or something and they drop it into a location where you can get it. You can create a job that runs a SQL script that goes and grabs that file and imports that data for you. So you can use it to automate some of your data import and make your life a little bit easier. And the second option that we have for importing data is to actually use an extension. Azure Data Studio has a lot of extensions that you can install that add features into the application for you. So if you go over here and go to extensions, you can see I already have this installed, but it's called SQL Server Import. So if you don't have this installed, you can go ahead and install it from the marketplace. 
And what this does is it actually walks you through a little wizard where you can select the file and make some modifications to the headers and things like that before you do the import. So I go back over here to my database and now if I right click on this, you'll have an option here called import wizard. So I go ahead and select that and then you just walk through the wizard. So first you choose the server, the database, and then the location of the file. I'll click browse and go into my location here. This is one difference from how we did it before using bulk insert. So bulk insert runs on the server and so the server has to have access to that file. But when you do it using this extension, it's Azure Data Studio who's doing all the data processing for you and not the actual server itself. And so here you can see I actually am using my local path to that file. And then after you select the file, it'll automatically create a table name for you based off of what your file name is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change the table name to be vehicles Wiz for vehicles wizard. I'll leave the schema as DBO. You can choose a different schema here if you want to, but one thing to keep in mind is that if you wanna have it in a different schema, you have to create the schema before you run this wizard. So now click next. This will just show you a preview of the data that it sees in the file, and this just kind of makes sure that it's reading everything correctly. If you see something in here that's not quite right, like it's not reading the columns correctly, that probably means you have an issue with your file and you need to go fix the file itself. So now click next, and now it takes you to a page where you can modify the columns. This is one difference between how we did it with bulk insert, because bulk insert needed a table created before you run the bulk insert. But this tool will read the columns in the file, and it will actually create the table for you. And it is kind of unfortunate that it always creates the table. You can't actually add it to an existing table. So that's one little thing I don't like about this, but you could always you know, put this into a staging table and then import it using just regular raw SQL. So from here, if you want to, you can change any of the column names. You can change data types. You can say whether or not it's primary key. So I'll go ahead and say that this is a primary key and I'll leave all the data types as they are and I'll say import data. So on this last page, if it does fail, it'll usually tell you why it failed. But this was successful, so if we say done, if I come over here to tables, refresh the tables, there's the new table, and I'll just say select top 1000, and there you can see that it is working correctly. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Like I mentioned before, these are the two ways that I know of of doing this in the tool itself. There is, of course, a lot of other options out there that you can use for all the different ETL tools, but these are just the ones that I know of that are part of Azure Data Studio itself. I also hope this was helpful for anyone out there who are non-Windows users who are using SQL Server. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.